Hello, I've got the top 10 tips. If you're going out for afternoon tea at a lovely hotel, such as one of the London hotels, there's many tips, but these are probably the top 10, I'd say. So I recommend you do dress up. Actually, some of the nice hotels do have a dress code, so you wouldn't even get in without a jacket and a tie at the Ritz. The, the gentlemen are definitely asked to dress up and uh, luckily they keep a secret stock of jackets and ties in the cloakroom for the men that haven't come prepared. But it's nice to dress up. I've got a darling brother who does not like to dress up and so he doesn't go to those places. And of course, you can be relaxed and in your jeans, you know, 364 days of the year. But my uh, vote is for making a bit of an effort and turning out nicely. <laughs> my next one is when you get to the napkin stage, uh, it will be a half a napkin. That's the shape we're meant to go for. Some of the hotels will put it on your lap for you. But we're not going for jaunty triangles. We're not spreading it all out, though, you know, I am a messy pup. That would be wise, and we're not going for that, but you know that it's a half a napkin in an oblong. So that's another tip. Now, I would really recommend you try at least two, if not three, teas. I mean cups of tea. So in the posh hotels, they usually say you can change your tea during the afternoon tea experience. You're paying quite a lot for it, now, I'm not saying it's bad value, but one of the delights is to say, I've tried the rose flavoured da di da tea. Can I please try the mint such and such tea? And they will bring you another cup and saucer. They'll bring you another teapot. And I'd go for a third one if you can. I try and choose at least one or two I've never had before. You might as well. These are expensive, lovely quality teas. So take advantage of being out in those hotels and go for it. We have a tea room of our own and we offer about 26 types of tea and uh, we recommend people to try and try again. We offer bottomless teapots. <laughs> so that would be my third tip. My fourth tip is take a photo of the food and your friends and then put your camera away. We're all addicted to our phones and cameras, but the afternoon tea setting is not the time for phone conversations. <laughs> I do appreciate capturing the moment, but this is not, you know, a full on um, use of your camera throughout because it's getting in the way of your relationship with the people you're sitting there with. So take a photo, camera away. There is a London hotel that actually has uh, written on its menu that they ask you not to have your phones out. Ooh, ooh, that told us. Okay, when the food arrives, it often comes on one of these. They're called whatnots or cake stands. It's a Victorian style uh, imagery. This is one of our ones here. Um, we had it made by a blacksmith. So there will be sandwiches, savoury course. That's what you're meant to start with. <laughs> Hands up if you like to go for the cakes first. No, no, no. So sandwiches, but again, if you're in one of the posh hotels, the lovely lavish hotels in London, they will often offer unlimited sandwiches. And we are supposed to have as many of the sandwiches as we want. You can definitely order more. You can order more again. We've been in one of the hotels. Was it the Langham Roger? And they just kept offering more sandwiches, more and more and more. That's absolutely fine. Have as many as you want, but you're not supposed to move on to the sweet food and then go back to sandwiches. So you've got to finish with the savoury before moving on. That's another rule. <laughs> no takeaways. Of the sandwiches. No, no, you can't say, can I have another three plates to take home? That doesn't work. So savoury first and order as much as you want of it. Next, cakes and scones or scones. If the scones have arrived warm, I would tuck into those next because it's a shame for them to go cold and harder when they are most delightful when warm. Some hotels bring them up in a cloche or in a cloth or all sorts, but go for the scones if they are warm. If they're room temperature, then you have the choice. So cakes and scones. Now, 
just to remind us of the top etiquette with our scones or scones. Tip number seven is we don't cut the scones. You don't cut them that way on, you don't cut them that way on. These are your implements. So unless it's the world's smallest, meanest scone that will not let you break it, in which case you've got to use any means possible, you break your scone in half, you prize it. It produces a craggy texture which tastes better and it's just considered better manners. Did you know we're meant to break a bread roll as well? We're never meant to cut one of those. So you break your scone, but rule number eight is you take the cream and the jam and you put it on the side of your plate. It does not go directly onto your scone or scone. Uh, what happens unfortunately is that if you've done that, you've taken the cream, you've added it straight on, you will end up with either in the jam or the cream, some of the bits of your food going back to the common dishes. So it goes onto the side of your plate and from there, you will load up your bits of scone delights uh, manually with the knife at that point. Cakes. So cakes come last. That's my tip number nine. And the good news if you're getting pretty full is you can usually have a take home bag. Uh, many of the hotels appreciate that this is a feast. I mean, people complain about the amount of money spent on afternoon tea, but it's actually the equivalent of a dinner in London. It's a lavish affair and you will be hard pushed to finish the cakes as well. <laughs> So do not worry because you can often ask for a goodie bag. Most hotels will do that. You can even ask during the meal, if I can't manage this all, any chance I could take? Yes, yes, we'll bring you a box. And then you've got your little boasting bag. And then lastly, number 10, if it's been a marvellous experience, do give them a write up and uh, mention the lovely staff. I always ask for my waiter or waitress's name. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Manny. That was lovely. And of course, give a tip. But I would give a tip in the form of a review as well and mention the lovely service that we had from those people. That's an all round.